can start recording. Ooh, so let me share my screen with you all and we can talk about chapter four of the advanced R book, which discuss subsetting. So um, this presentation was put together by Alex and I will just be presenting it to you today. So just as an overview, this chapter was about subsetting and it predominantly talked about three different methods for subsetting, um, where you use a single bracket, um, where you use a double bracket, and where you use a dollar sign for subsetting your data. Um, and then it compared methods for subsetting and assignment simultaneously, and it gave some examples. So first, let's talk about just the bracket. So if you have um, a vector, which here is just A, B, C, D, and you ask for the first item in that vector, it spits out the first item, which is A. Not surprising, right? Um, but then you can also spit in um, a negative integer, where you're basically asking for everything except for the first item, and it gives you um, the rest of the output. Um, similarly, this one is sort of confusing for me, um, but if you ask for it to subset uh, by basically true, false, true, false, that true and false corresponds to yes subset, like yes include this, and false corresponds to no don't include this. Um, so only A and C would be included because they correspond to the two true values. And then if you spit out um, your vector with empty brackets, that's it just spits out the whole thing. And returning your um, vector with a zero, it just says like character zero. I personally have not used this and could not think of an example when this example would be um, useful in practice if you guys have any input i had um something that tripped me up with that zero thing mm -hmm. um because i had one case where um i think it was like you have it was like a shiny app you have like a numeric input from the user um mm -hmm. and it returns like that many rows um but x zero even in data frames is like not like a data frame but like you know a character or a zero length list um, so it like screwed everything down um, past it. So make sure not to put zero in indices of data frames or <laughs> lists, I guess. Mm -hmm. That is good to know. I haven't worked a lot with Shiny yet, um, but maybe someday. <laughs> and then another thing is you can also put in the name. So um, if you have X and you put in if it has names, I guess like here, one, two, three, and this, what is that, a little dragon emoticon um, or emoji, then if you ask for the dragon emoji, it'll give you the value corresponding to that name. And so this, <laughs> an example that's not emojis that I have found helpful is like if I have a list of parameters, um, each of these will say like alpha, beta, gamma, et cetera. And then I can just go in and say, give me my alpha value. Would not recommend using emojis, but you guys already discussed that. <laughs> um, and then they discuss different, um, different things you can subset. And there was a really helpful table. So I'm going to actually go over, this was the moon thing. Um, and try and find the table in the chapters so that we can talk about it. If anyone knows what I'm talking about and remembers where it is, feel free to spit it out. Or maybe, actually, I think, I think go ahead. Did you scroll by it? There was a table, but you. I am scrolling really fast, yeah. Um, I think it actually was from the R for data science help here. Um, this is like the quick guide to what each of these methods for subsetting can return for you um, by the different forms of uh, input you can have. 
And I found this really helpful because it's very concise and like the chapters were many words and this is very few words, but basically um, atomic vectors and matrices, you can't use the dollar sign operator, which makes sense, right? Um, because they're different. Uh, I don't know how to put it into words, but like when I think about the dollar sign, I think of a data frame and I'm calling something with a name and that doesn't necessarily exist uh, with these. And then with tibble, you're almost always getting a tibble in return. With your data frame, uh, it can return a vector or a data frame or like the list that belongs to that column, just depending on, I guess, what R is feeling like that day. Um, and then if you use the single brackets and you have a matrix and you're trying to pull out a single value, these correspond to row, comma, column. Remember with ridiculous columns. Okay, so there is also output that um, can be weird, but useful for very specific situations. So getting, for instance, with class, uh, Alex shows how, you know, if you're spitting out your whole matrix, it's a matrix, but if you're just selecting certain items in your matrix, then it's actually spitting out integers. So it, when you're trying to debug or figure out like how you're subsetting your data, this can be useful when you're figuring out what has happened or what's going wrong. And if it's important to preserve the dimensionality, you can use drop equals false to make sure that um, that information stays there. Okay, so the double brackets. The double brackets are almost equivalent to the dollar sign, <laughs> which is such an odd way to um, categorize it. But basically um, using your double brackets is selecting a single item. Um, for most items, it's gonna return a value as opposed to like smaller lists. Uh, so here for this example, where you have this tibble asking for just A from the tibble can spit out that information as um, a tibble and a data frame. We sort of played around with this last time versus when you're using double brackets, it's just giving you that number. And so this can be really useful for lists where um, if you don't have a named list, that can be really useful. But if it is a named list, the dollar sign is sort of faster or more straightforward, in my opinion. It's what I typically default to. I don't know. Do you guys default to any of the brackets when you're using R? I'll take that as a solid not really. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like it's not really taught this way, but um, go ahead. Okay, I feel like it's not really taught this way to, to default on the brackets, but maybe for people who learned a different programming language first with the caveat that like Python uses the brackets a little bit differently, um, it can be uh, a shorter learning curve. All right. And then they talked about subsetting an assignment at the same time. So these are very common things um, and it's pretty intuitive. So here there's an example where you have data and then you want to subset that data, but you have two dimensions. So you just want the first six rows and you get out a tipple that has the first six rows. And so this is a way that you can subset it um, without having to use like the tidyverse of, you know, subset, et cetera, which I guess can be faster once you get really large data sets. Um, and then there's eight different examples in the book. 
from random sampling to more um, complex algebra subsetting. And so let's go to the book. Two, four, five. So let's see. Here's an example where you have a list um, or you have a, a vector of different characters and then you have M corresponding to male and F corresponding to female and you're corresponding to MA, uh, NA. And then your, uh, I guess, assigning this list as you're searching through X um, or the X vector. I don't know, has anybody used an application like this as they've worked with their own data? Only in ggplot labels. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, like for faceting and stuff, I might make a vector that looks just like lookup and then just mm -hmm. give that to the labeler function and it mm -hmm. has nice label. But this is just right the subsetting by names, but you just mm -hmm. have repeats. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, that's funny. I haven't thought of that. Has anyone have had a lot of experience using um, subsetting in this way or um, assigning and subsetting in this way compared with using the tidyverse, like using the subset function or filter function? I'm just wondering if anyone knows how different they are in terms of their speed. I would assume that this is faster just because you don't have to load another package and wait for all the things from the tidyverse, but we do not know. Okay, so then there is also the example of integer subsetting. So you have a list of grades ranging from one to three um, corresponding to good, excellent, or poor. And then there's this match function to um, assign it or basically spit out the, the info corresponding to the categorical grade matched up with the numerical grade. And then there's this third column saying if someone has failed the class or not based on that grade. Okay. And then um, for integer subsetting, let's see. Do you want me to walk through these all step by step? I gladly will. Basically, so you have x, which is this vector of um, numbers. You have y and you have z. And so all of these together randomly just reorder to make this data frame. Um, and then sample, which is the random sample function is used to pull out just three items from that data frame. And then let's see. Then here on data frame, there are six items, is that right? Yes, that are um, sampled. And then you have this replace equals true if you want to give the option to sample something more than once. And then I feel like there was an, ex an example earlier in the chapters where they used the sample function, but then they used the single brackets. So it was like sample df bracket to close bracket um, for like randomly sampling from the second item. But we can also test that. We can just open up R and test it in a bit. Let's see, yeah, integer subsetting. Um, th so this is using the sample and order function and order defaults to alphabetical and then numerical order. And then there's integer subsetting. So we have this um, data frame, which has X, Y, and N. And um, here you're subsetting um, from your, the data frame and spitting out um, 
I actually don't know what this is spitting out. Let's see. It's gonna repeat each row n times. I see. So that instead of having, yeah, aggregated counts, you have each individual observation. Thank you. Okay. Was there anything that like stood out to anyone? And this, again, I know for me, the difference was trying to think about comparing these subsetting methods to the subset function, since that's what I use most frequently. And it's quickly becoming a bad approach as the data sizes that I'm working with are growing. Um, but yeah, what stood out to other people from these chapters? Did you recognize a lot of the things you were doing or was it all new news for you? I have something that's like tangently related um, for like subsetting really large like data frames or tables or like matrices. Um, I don't know if you all have like tried different versions, but I'm just going to put it in chat because I don't know how um, it, well I can explain it. But, I can also stop sharing if you want to share an R window or something. Oh, no, this is just like really quick. Um, okay. But like, uh, so if you wanted to extract like a uh, index or I guess like a cell value um, from like a data frame, I don't know if like this is faster or like, this is faster because at least for me i get like very different like times and i don't know if that's like something with my machine but it's not like really stable which one is faster but they always seem to differ um so i don't know if people have experienced that with like large data frames hmm. is there any reason for the double brackets on the second oh so to extract just the value um, not like return a data frame. I think that's how you do it. What's the or function? At least for, yeah. Sorry, what's the function for spitting out? I can just Google it. Oh, there's benchmark and micro benchmark, if that's what you're yeah. wondering. Sorry, it's been a while. Yeah, I just tried the second one with one bracket on the iris and it's not a data frame it's numeric okay i think this might be data that table thing um because oh. that's where i first encountered it but yeah either way just whichever indicing is faster i was wondering can i actually I... will do the dollar sign i'm oh, sorry go ahead go ahead sorry i'm just I, I will do the dollar sign because i'm just too lazy and instead of typing the column name i will just do dollar sign and then I will also complete the names. Well, I don't really know. Like, it's a good question. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I feel the pressure of live uh, coding <laughs> right now. <laughs> I will say, I just look back at my pre-quiz and I had no idea what single brackets with nothing inside was like yeah <laughs> yeah that was um that was new for me too but from June's um example I guess I can be useful for like the shiny documents or for when you have data frames that you're trying to get values from Sorry, I was muted. Um, can you see my screen? <laughs> um, can, I just... can you make the text a little bigger? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was going to say, I'll just show what it looks like on my machine and then try to see if that replicates. Uh, yeah, so this is the 
like indicing with row and column at the same time. And this is um, pulling out the column and then indexing. Um, and it looks like this is a microsecond, this is a nanosecond. So like this way is faster. I think that's consistent with most of the times I've tried this, um, but I don't know why, um, or if this is like a fact. I, I think accessing elements of lists is faster in R potentially. Mm. While I'm at it, I'm going to try. I think that should work, right? So they're like all different. <laughs> no, you have to do it 500 times and get a medium. And get all right, good point. I guess, so assuming that, say you're working with a small enough data set that the time differences between these different methods is negligible. Which, which would you default to or what do you view as the strengths of the different approaches because for like for me defaulting with the numerical brackets isn't always intuitive um, but I work with a lot of people who don't have a any coding background I always go with what's easier cleaner and something that I can read later and understand um, I get lost in the brackets. It swims in front of my eyes. So also the, we talked about the dependence on the tidyverse. This is all based and I love the tidyverse and boop, I get lost there. So I, can, um, I know I, I love the tidyverse too. I probably like use it too much. <laughs> I also wanted to point out at the very, very end of the chapter, uh, let me find it. They, they brought up a, like a difference between Python and R in the subsetting. And I think this is really important, but just because um, I switch between Python and R pretty regularly. Um, so the, let's see, I'll share my screen just so that we can view it. So um, under the, under the quiz answers, they just talk about it here that in Python, if you see like data frame one through three for rows and one through two for columns, you might expect three columns and two rows. And so R and Python are like swapped. So that can be very frustrating if you use the brackets and numerical um, methods. So, okay, I'm gonna stop my share and then reshare. All right, <laughs> can we answer all these quiz questions now? So we talked already, I think, about sort of like the difference in discussion, but I mean, instead of just like, what's the result of subsetting with positive versus negative integers, um, what, what do you gain by subsetting with negative integers? It's just really quick, right? Yeah, I feel like um, if you're doing something descriptive and exploratory that the negative, like subsetting with negative integers can be helpful, but I don't know. I couldn't think of a lot of examples where I would use that outside of an exploratory context. Or if you're walking through a list or you want mm -hmm. uh, specific values, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you know, I would be repeating. I believe you said if I know 
the this structure I'm waiting. So let's say I have a some sort of function, and I know the data that will come that will be passed as an input. It has, for example, a unique ID in the first mm -hmm. column always. So the first thing I will do is, as I know that that unique ID doesn't really tell me anything, just to identify each row, then I will immediately just do uh, whatever the data is minus one. So get rid of that to do anything further. So I guess that's my example. I mean, which you can do in different ways because then you can say uh, ID equal like no, so drop that or drop that column from the data frame. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think I use minus in the select function in tidyverse quite a bit because yeah. oftentimes I'll know what I don't want, but I won't know all the things I want to keep. Mm -hmm. So similar. I also like, I use like minus one a lot, I think more often than minus other indices. Um, especially if you're having like moving window function, like moving window, like averages or like the accumulate mm -hmm. function. Um, you sometimes don't care about like what it initializes to, but just like what happens afterwards. So I often use it just to get rid of like the first index. Yeah, I guess, yeah, similar to that. If like you do a Bayesian analysis and you want to burn, like get rid of the beginning of your samples. Mm -hmm. um. Those are good examples. I The data I've been working with for the last year, the unique identifiers are essential for like understanding the data. Um, so it was kind of hard for me to like get out of that headspace to actually think like, when would I need to use this? Um, all right, let's see. And I don't know. Um, is there anything from these chapters that you might find difficult to apply that like you, you saw and thought this might be useful, but like maybe we should practice or go through an example? I take it then that you're all a genius at all the things. <laughs> um, one of the things that I wanted to see, they, they had the train figure um, and we kind of already discussed this and like talked over it, but for me, this is really helpful. I have a really hard time um, with the single versus double brackets especially like the more complicated your your input item gets. And so this figure was really helpful just for um, visualizing if you have this list with all of these items of um, data. I don't basically. think we can see what you're pointing at. Thank you for pointing that out. I thought I had shared my screen. All right, sorry. So this train figure um, where if you have a, like a, complicated list where it's not just one through five um, and you're trying to subset specific items when like I feel like this shows the utility of single versus double brackets really well and um, just that all the different subsetting methods just because I do tend to default to using the tidyverse select or filter functions so um, this was helpful for me and I think I'll be integrating this as as I said as I'm working with bigger data now But it sounds like you guys have had actually like a lot of experience using um, these types of subsetting methods. But again, with the tidyverse, with all the <laughs> select, subtract, flap, you know, that's easy. That's... I know, I love it so much. So this is good for debugging and like, why did I do wrong? Uh, I will say I do really like logical subsetting. Um, I know you said it was confusing, but for like, if I need to do matrix operations and just like 
doing logical statements on whole matrices and subsetting whole matrices. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think that it's, that's a really common approach um, for most people who do a lot of data science. I feel like I've like snuck in a window into the realm of data science, you know, um, <laughs> and still kind of don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, but I think that like, especially when I go to Stack Overflow and I find a lot of um, tips for dealing with problems, it, typically uh, there's like the more complex type of um, subsetting methods that are not mm -hmm. the tidyverse. I will also say like being able to like pluck out um, like a vector, like the cart versus like a train with the cart distinction is really important um, for like using data table, data dot table, um, which I've been using a lot because I've been dealing with bigger data because um, that allows like modify in place. Um, and so when you are trying to assign values to cell, like you have to make sure that you pick the cell value and not like a cell of a data frame. So like you have to have the indexing return a numeric per se, um, as opposed to like uh, data dot frame, data dot table. Uh, yeah, so that also becomes important there. That's where I have a lot of experience with this particularly. That's good to know. I don't have a lot of experience with like the, the data tables. Um, I've been slowly converting everything to tibbles. Well, what do you guys want? Do you want to walk through any examples? Do you want to call it a day? Have 20 minutes of social time? yeah i'm probably gonna hop off <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's the end of the day for everyone or for most of us yeah yeah <laughs> so i think that's perfectly reasonable i'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording um but thank you for taking the time to be here Sorry about my sleepy presentation style. <laughs> sort of a surprise, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that we all got to discuss it because you guys have a lot of practical uh, experience, it sounds like, with these subsetting methods, and I really don't because of the tidyverse and its beauty. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, like, I remember when I first started, I used the which function a lot, and then when I learned about logical, I was like, never need the which function. <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying to learn the which function, um, but just getting like too confused, flipping between Python and R and like trying to learn everything else about using both languages at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And then we'll stop.